Next, we read a lot about how our lifestyles are becoming more sedentary and how bad that might be for our health. But while that might conjure an image in your mind of someone who's stuck on the sofa with a bag of crisps... I'll say. <laughs> in fact, the latest headlines suggest it's anyone sitting at a desk that could be at risk. Well, I'd be looking at some of those headlines, Kevin, and I'd tell you, anyone who does have a desk job is in for a pretty rude awakening. Sitting down makes you age by eight years, and in women, it speeds up the ageing process. Do you know, Kevin, um, I think we should be standing up doing this programme. Well, just to get more of an understanding on this, I went to find out whether or not it's time we all stood up for our health. Like millions of office workers around the country, these colleagues in Brighton like to sit down an awful lot. I'm chained to my desk normally, nine to five. Go home, sit on my sofa, I don't stand a lot at all. I'm really conscious of the fact that I sit at my desk a lot, so I do think about it. The only time I get up is for lunch or to go to the toilet. The World Health Organization has branded physical inactivity as the fourth biggest killer in the world. And sitting down is proven to be a contributing factor to a wide range of conditions such as heart disease, diabetes and cancer. All information that has been very widely reported. Over the years, I've been an actor, dancer, personal trainer, amongst a few other things as well, but I've never really had a desk job. Now, if I'm to believe all of those headlines, then well, I should be feeling smug right now because I'll have a body that is fitter, stronger, younger, healthier. Professor John Buckley has spent four years looking into the activity of office workers, and he thinks I'm right to feel a bit smug. Well, there's been quite a few large-scale studies in the past 10 years looking at the strong links between those people who have jobs where they sit a lot and the incidence of things like diabetes and heart problems and strokes and obesity. And people who spend more than um, six or seven hours a day seated tend to start developing these problems. John says around two-thirds of the population spend more than 60% of their day seated, which is asking for trouble. How long is too long to sit down? You shouldn't be sat for more than an hour if you can break it up throughout the day. Opening the blood vessels, getting that glucose flowing into the tissues on frequent basis seems to bring the, the levels of those unhealthy things in the body down over the course of the day. Because it also increases our heart rate, standing up burns energy and gives you health benefits. To find out just how much energy it burns, John has fitted up our team with heart rate monitors to see the changes between standing up and sitting down. OK, Sophie, how much has yours gone up by? Is it going up? Uh, yeah, it's going up now. Going up? Is yours going up? Yeah, about five beats per minute. OK, you're doubling your energy expenditure compared to sitting down. Now, that's a 0.8 calories extra every minute on average that you're doing that. That doesn't seem much, but add it up over a year and it comes to the equivalent of about eight pounds of fat of energy. John's challenging the team to reduce their sitting time over the next two days, so he's given them all activity monitors. On day one, the team will behave as normal, but on day two, they'll attempt to increase their standing time. Rather than use a big bottle of water, yeah. I'd maybe use a little glass and just keep making more trips to the water machine. Rather than eating my lunch at my desk, I might yeah. just get up and go for a walk for the hour. I'm going to come back in a couple of days to see how much activity you've been doing. John has high hopes that the team can significantly reduce the percentage of time they spend inactive. And in this case, 70 is the magic number. The data shows that we start to see problems occur when people start to spend more than 70% of their waking hours seated. What I'm hoping to see, and I haven't primed them at all on this, is whether they're sitting for less than 70% of their waking hours. It's not just office workers that could do with paying attention to how much time they spend on their backsides. GP Aisha Sharif says her surgery is full of people whose illnesses stem from a life spent sitting. I see the problems of a sedentary lifestyle day in, day out. The muscular support that you have, for example, in your spine is not that strong, so you have a weaker back. You're more prone to back injuries and back pain. And you also, interestingly, can be more at risk of things like constipation because you literally aren't moving those bowels. So we see this a lot in elderly population. But some conditions can be more serious and even life-threatening. You're more at risk of cancer, diabetes, of course, cardiovascular diseases like stroke, 
heart disease. Aisha's advice is clear that we all need to get moving if we want to live a long and healthy life. So my advice would be definitely try to get a more active lifestyle, not through the big things, but through the little things that we can incorporate day to day, parking the car further from the entrance to a shop, for example, taking those stairs instead of hitting the elevator. Small things make a big difference. Back in Brighton, it's day two of the experiment, and some of the team are showing promise when it comes to increasing their activity. Here we are, beautiful sunny day, and I'm going to go for a walk. I'm just going onto the IT floor to speak to one of the IT guys instead of emailing him. Today I've just been trying to keep coming up and downstairs to give messages to people and talk to people um, rather than using the phone. I thought I would come over to use IT's standing desks to get off of my desk for a while. The next day, Professor Buckley returns to Brighton, and the results are in for his tests. Welcome back. Hi, John. How did you find it? Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the results. The team were assessed for how much of both their working day and their whole day they were sitting. The more they can reduce their time towards the 70% target, the more they will decrease their chances of developing some cancers, heart disease and diabetes. First up, it's the working day. So the average sitting time at work reduced from 430 minutes in the day, which is about 85% of your working hours, down to 364, which is about 75% of your working hours. So that's good, you're getting towards that 70% target. So there's still room for improvement whilst at work, but across the whole waking day, the team have broken below the magic 70. You actually have become more healthy in terms of the activity. You're on average 83% as a team we are spending sitting down. And I put a red line here, which is our target, and you're down to 64%. So all of the team have done well across their whole day, but they're still a way off when it comes to work. The experiment has been a wake-up call, though, and they're now sold on the idea of standing more. I'm going to make sure I stand up when I'm on the phone. Yeah, Steve? Well, I think I'll continue to go out at lunchtime and try and be on my feet for the whole hour rather than eat my lunch sitting down. Get away from the office exactly. for lunch. And maybe one day it'll become more habit rather than you having to consciously think about it. It seems many of those reports were right. And we just don't have any idea how sedentary our lifestyles are or the impact it could have on our health. But simple lifestyle changes could help us all get under that crucial 70%. I think the overall general message is really never to be on your uh, backside for more than an hour at a time. 